Just over an hour northeast of Las Cruces on US 70 East are High Rose and Mountain Park. Home to Cadwallader's Mountain Farms and Cherry Orchards, this lush patch of land operated as the fruit basket for the region for many years. And their you pick fields during cherry season are still relished by visitors to this day. Good morning. Morning. How are you today? Good. I'm here to pick some cherries. All right. <laughs> These are your cans. They hold about four pounds. Okay. The buckets hold about 12. Opting for the smaller pail, I head for the fields. The orchard is already bustling. Through the leaves, I get glimpses of kids in trees, sightings of arms and hands reaching through the branches, accompanied by giggles and banter as the day's cherry pickers harvest the abundance of fruit hanging from the trees above. Morning. And despite the number of people already here, this orchard is anything but crowded. I make my way down the rows until I find a tree that appears to be calling my name. One with a ladder already in place. Well, this tree yielded a pretty decent haul. Upgrading to a larger bucket, I decided to check out another corner of the orchard with more cherry varietals. This is the gold mine right here. Here we go. This looks promising. Yeah. Ten different clusters. Come on. Give it to me. Yeah. That's a good day's work right there, if I do say so myself. I think I picked my weight in cherries. Before I go tally my day's pickings, though, I want to grab a word with the farmer behind it all. We're here in this beautiful cherry orchard, and um, it seems like it's a nice, serene, peaceful place to be. But there's a lot of food to be picked. So I'm um, just wondering how long you guys have been doing this here. We've been doing the U pick since 1943. My grandfather started because there was no help during World War II. Mm -hmm. All the men were at war. Right. And so he had a big crop and uh, opened it to the public and we've been doing it ever since. So we've uh, owned this piece of property since about 1902. Wow. It came in pretty early in the, at the turn of the last century. That's crazy, but it's still, it's always been cherries? They've kind of done cherry. cherries and fruit and they used to grow cauliflower and broccoli and mm -hmm. they also grew flowers and shipped them to Dallas. So they were kind of entrepreneurs, you know, right. beginning. We, a farmer always grows what he can make it the best money out of. Right. While the crops may not be as diverse as the early 1900s, Cadwallader's peaches, apples, and other fruits keep this operation going, all of which you can buy at the farm stand if you don't pick it yourself. And just a bit further up the road is another main attraction, the Old Apple Barn. This old barn turned emporium is a one-stop shop for treats of every kind. Harkening back to the old mercantile stores and emporiums of yesteryear, Every item is packaged and presented to evoke classic Americana. And I hope you saved room, because they also serve up some good old-fashioned desserts, all of which they make from scratch upstairs. When I arrive, Bill and his son Hunter are hard at work making candied apples and pecan praline. So Bill, how would you describe the old apple barn? Because there's a lot of moving pieces, it seems. Well, it used to be the new apple barn okay. in 1941. Well, they processed the apples on the top floor. And once they were clean, sized, and grated, they were put into boxes and slid down a galvanized slide. Mm -hmm. And then they would go out a sidetrack for the old-fashioned train. Oh, so the railroad that kind of... It oh, had a sidetrack okay. right four feet from the building. Wow. Yeah. This elevation, called High Rolls and Mountain Park, had all the fruits and vegetables. So it's kind of always been a mecca for produce and farming and those kind of things. Yeah, after World War II, less young men, you know, they had seen Paris. Right. And so less of them came back. <laughs> but there's still a component that's very active. Right. And for you, why was it important to preserve that history? Well, we're both from the Midwest, and we went to places like this as kids. Our parents mm. would take us to places like this. We loved it. And we thought, this is perfect. It's an historic apple barn, mm -hmm. but it's in the Southwest. <laughs> and so 
we kind of transported that sort of feeling mm -hmm. uh, into southern New Mexico. So are any of the recipes special recipes that come from your family? Absolutely. My older brothers were hunters mm -hmm. and I didn't like getting up in the morning. So I spent my time in the kitchen with my grandmother. She <laughs> taught me how to make fudge, work with sugar. I have the lard crust because mm -hmm. of her, which is the extra flavor. You got to have that. Right. And the pecan pies, we pack them with a, a cup and a half of pecans in each pie. So, so no skimping on no, the pecans. No, mm -hmm. and we double bake all our crust. Oh, no man. soggy bottoms. <laughs> you don't want that. No soggy bottoms here. I think it's safe to say they've nailed it. Their must-try items are absolutely the classic root beer float, the pecan pie, and the homemade fudge, but that's just for starters. This is also the perfect place to grab a gift to take home with you. Books, culinary accessories, toys, you name it, they have it. And if you come down for the You Pick Cherries, the season generally starts in June.